In this video, I'm going to talk about Wu Ling's Tai Chi staff. First of all, he loved the rattan staff. This staff is about two pounds and about an inch and a quarter in diameter. Um, it's a nice light staff. You can really feel the weight, yet yeah, it's nice and light in the hand. That staff over there, that's the longer staff, it was given to me by a friend and she was pretty tall. The staff normally should be about one hand length above your standing height. The staff is just about right. The staff, um, the unique thing about Guo staff is that he, there's a lot of sliding on the staff to keep the long end of the staff out. A lot of staff work that you see the staff practitioner is in the middle and they do action and there's not a lot of adjustment for the end of the staff. But in Go style, you're constantly adjusting the staff so that you're on the long end of the stick. The other most notable uh, thing about Sifu's Taiji staff is that there's no twirling, a butterfly, or kind of spinning, like you see in lots of styles, like that. If Sifu caught you spinning the staff, his favorite English term, Buhao, which means not good. You know, Sifu knew some English words, one was how, that's really good. You heard how from Sifu, you go, oh yeah. But he could also cut you down by saying, Wow, yeah, they went bad. And if he's caught you twirling the staff, that's what he would say. There's no twirling in his staff set. So it's basically a fairly functional set with all practical movements. And um, Sufu loved the staff. If he saw you doing the staff, he'd love to come over and show you what the move is for. So I know uh, quite a bit of application in the staff according to what Sifu would show me, he'd come over and show me the movement and you know he didn't like sit down and explain it to you. He just took the staff and he did it to you and if you didn't pick it up at one time, that's too bad for you. So anyway, that Sifu loved the staff and that's one important aspect of uh, watching the staff set. It's pretty basic and fairly simple. Um, the other thing you might notice uh, in my presentation of the staff set is in the way that the form is related to the Tai Chi form. In the Tai Chi form, you have the opening beginning with stripe palm uh, to Buddha, and then you go on, and then there's a repeat uh, first section, and then you get to Golden Cock stands on uh, one leg, and then you kind of repeat repulse monkey and it goes back. So, opening section, first section, second section repeat of second section, third section, and then ending. And then the staff set is arranged exactly the same. And so um, that's the way you can definitely feel the uh, inheritance of the Tai Chi styles, not to replicate the Guan Ping Tai Chi set, but it takes all the elements. Again, the staff stance is much more Tai Chi orientated than Shaolin. A lot of people watching this how the staff set is performed, especially the way that Bing did it, fast and flowing. You might tend to relate it to more of the Shaolin, but uh, Sifu would come over and say Taiji, Taiji, when you're doing the staff. So I really feel that uh, the staff is much more related to the Tai Chi set. And also some of that position, like in this position here, when you're doing the strike, um, what does that look like? That looks like brush knee twist step and your hand position, the arm position, exactly the same way as you do the loo, loo uh, pulling in brush knee twist step. So there's just some of the characteristics that uh, make the Tai Chi staff uh, similar to the Guan Ping. Okay, so the other um, really unique aspect of it and i've done a lot of research on the internet looking at different staff sets i did find one uh, korean karate where they did have this stopping action 
and the stopping action meaning that uh, instead of like flowing through the stick into the next motion, you actually have a stop so you can control where the staff hits. So you can direct right to the center and the staff doesn't go through so you can change the action immediately into the next action without having to follow through into another flow. Um, that's pretty unique in staff work. If you watched uh, a lot of staff set to have the twirling, it's kind of continuous flow. The one problem uh, when you don't have a stop is you have to wait until you hit something in order for the stick to be able to change direction or you have to flow through the action into the change into the next action. With a stop, you can go right into the next action. So again, if you're looking at uh, the characteristics of Sifu's unique uh, Tai Chi staff style, that's a very important aspect. In the karate, uh, it was a Korean karate uh, video, the guy did do the stop, but he didn't do any sliding. And the sliding, as I will explain, becomes a really critical aspect of uh, Sifu staff work. Uh, not only is the sliding, Okay, so let's talk about the stop. So the stop action is like, uh, again, like rusty foot step. If you're on this side, but you could do it on both sides. Is against the forearm and the lower part of your upper arm, below, just below the tricep. If you do it too high, you start to kind of bruise your arm. So you want it all along, okay? So having the stop action for the stick controls the hip. So I can basically control the amount of force that that hip is going to do. And you can kind of have a light tap or you can have a heavy tap. The sliding action happens uh, from the waist rotation. And you know, you've all practiced Qigong and you know, one of the Yituan and Qigong practices is doing this. We are developing basically counter rotation to get width, um, like a shoot tiger bow, that counter rotation to get the power for that force. In the same way, this, like we call it wiping the table kind of thing. It's like the waist precedes the hand. I kind of compare it to like uh, throwing a frisbee or a discus throw see that the body is like like this and this comes in strong in the st staff action where you're so <clears throat> so you're adjusting for the length so this will be the back side as you're going to sweep the st staff around for the length so first thing is the slide is to adjust the length so but in that sliding action, the sliding action is like coming back for that rotation. Like that. So it's like, like that. So just watch the right hand, see how. And it's, uh, it's not a simultaneous action like that. But it's like this whip precedes the action the staff finishes, and right on the end, like a whip, you have actually counter action, and there's lots of moves within the set that have that counter action. You might not be able to see it in the performance of that set, even in the slow motion, because it's very subtle. But the way that the staff is power is manipulated is very complex compared to just basically spinning and holding the stick in one place. Uh, an important aspect of Sifu staff work is in the very first exercise they teach, which is kind of learning the balance of the staff. You can do it slow. And you're just kind of learning to work with the staff and letting the weight of the staff, kind of dancing with the staff, that's what I call it. Because you're kind of letting the staff move through space on its own weight and you're manipulating it just with a slight touch, which is like uh, for sticking hands in Chi Sao and Tui Sho, pushing hands where you're kind of feeling and moving with the resistance. 
So in this very first exercise, you notice that my hand is not wrapped around the stick because the people tend to grab. There's this thing called monkey reflex, where when you grab, it's harder to let go. In the staff work, you're taught to be very relaxed on the grip of the staff because you're constantly changing and sliding on the staff. So one hand is sliding, one hand is gripping, one hand is gripping, one hand is sliding. Um, in the staff training, I actually sometimes like to uh, train students early in the staff because the staff teaches a lot about fulcrums. Because in the pivot point and the sliding action of the staff that comes from uh, Sifu's Tai Chi staff, once you slide back to the desired point of where this is going to come into that length and the long length out, this becomes a pivot point because now you grab tighter. And then in this action here, from the waist rotation, you're sliding along the stick. There's a lot of sliding. Kind of like when you're doing uh, chopping wood, you slide down for the maximum power, exactly with the same thing with the staff. You're fixing that point and you're sliding here. So if I was just doing this, I'm just doing the left side, left to right, keep coming back. But you could do both sides. And each time you do it, one hand is grabbing, one hand is sliding. Slide back, left is grabbing, right is sliding. Slide back, right is grabbing, left is sliding. So each time the stick is manipulated to the length, you're also doing a bunch of other stuff to create the power circuit. You're looking from the front. Again, you see all the different actions. It's being the focal point, the slide, then the stop. Going back to the stop, not only is it just basically a dead stopping action, at some point within the stick here, when it's starting to, the initial power is from the slide and the waist rotation. From right about here, you can use this to increase the velocity of the staff, just like a whip. And the whip, the action to increase the velocity is a snap back, right? And that's again, I always tell people there's basically kind of three steps or three levels of uh, creating power. One is just arm action, no waist rotation, just the arm moving. And this is even worse, just arm motion like this. Second step is basically simultaneous power rotation with the action. And like a uh, boxer's punch, where they kind of step into the punch, it's like uh, there's no whip. It's basically just stepping with full power into the thing. Same with the staff. If I rotate, rotate at the same time as the stick, it's kind of that second level power. But if I want to add to the velocity and the power of the stick by moving away from it, pushing right at that last moment, or snapping here, you can get a lot of power. You can hear that. Like that. Again, the rings on the staff, Sipu had a staff that had a metal cap with rings on it and you could really hear it ding, 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 use that for demonstration. So it's a very complex, simple move that uh, if you just look at it, you wouldn't understand all this, but I'm explaining to you so you can see all the nuances of the action. Again, from a frontal view, as you're sliding back to the pivot point to decide the length, this distance here decides the end length out here, like here. So from here would be like hmm, close to the camera. So in in some of the movements, it's kind of like you're as you're moving, you're sliding, and then you're going to end up 
with a stick to the desired length. Uh, we're just using the one uh, basic horizontal stroke. In a horizontal stroke, you can do it to the opposite side or you could do it you know, uh, same side. The stick is uh, the about arm level, level with the forearm, but the end position of the staff will be about nose level, so it's an upward angle. Moving out so you can see. Again, from the frontal position. And uh, in uh, preliminary staff exercises, which I think I'll teach some basic staff exercises, there's a lot of uh, walking involved with the stick, which is basically like uh, pushing hands. And I'll kind of show you the similarities as uh, we go on. But I'm just kind of covering some of the interesting aspects of the staff in, in this presentation. Okay, thank you.